What is going on? Guess what, baby? Unk is back. That's right. Took a week off. Went down there. I'll tell y'all a little bit about it in a second, but took a week off. But I am back. I don't take too much time off. But Unk is back in the house. That means it's Wednesday time. If you know it's Wednesday time, you know what time it is. Time for your Drunk Unk Sports Podcast. And I am your host, your Drunk Unk, Anwar Richardson. What's up, everybody? I missed you. It's our last show of June. Last show of June before we start heading into July, man. This year has been going by fast. I missed you guys, but I hope you guys have been having a good time. I know y'all didn't want me to come back. I know you missed me a little bit. But you also understand and understood that the power of Unk, when Unk goes on vacation, good things happen, right? Good good things happen. And your Longhorns picked the five commits while I was away. I let you guys know in advance, hey, if Unk's going to be away, I, I guarantee you're going to get some commits. Got five. Got Anthony Hill before that. Had another bunch of before that. Arch Manning being a, a, amongst them. But I'm here. I'm back. And I've got a, such a fun show for you guys planned but before i go here let me pay the bills oh by the way you're right rodolfo y'all did get a uh, kj as well man my the power of unk going over kj i'm thinking about taking another one just just because right so anyway um before i do that let me get too far let's pay some bills let me tell you who this show is brought to you by is by my main man el presidente Eric sells homes DFW. Look, y'all, it's time. It is summertime. You need a house. It is a hundred and something degrees. Your house is breaking down. You don't want to be out there in them streets. And my man, Eric sells homes DFW, Eric Torres, aka Presidente, he's got you covered. Make sure you check him out, man. Like, if you got a home that you want to buy in the DFW area, that you want to sell in the DFW area, I mean, he's got you covered. He's the main man with the master plan, you know. And so hit him up. Eric sells homes, DFW. It's July. Now is the buying time. And don't be out there and, and, and get out manned. Because there's other, these other realtors, they're going to put, a, they're gonna put like, you know, they're going to press you. They're going to put that defense on you. Eric, he's going to make sure he puts you in the right spot to succeed. Hit my man up. Eric Sells Homes, DFW. He's going to be on the show in a little bit. I spent last week in Mexico. When you tell most people that you go to Mexico, everybody's just thinking Cancun, right? That's just a natural thought. And everyone said, oh, was out in Cancun, just getting it in, getting lit, doing all that kind of stuff. But I'll put some transparency for you because, you know, you guys are my family. That's the, that's the genesis of the show. The Junk Oak Show. People, so, sometimes I, I see stuff and I sometimes see comments and people don't understand the show. Because I, 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 I can tell people who don't understand the show by the comments that they make. And they'll say, like, oh, man, the, there's this guy. He has a couple of drinks and he cusses a lot and da-da-da-da-da. Like, first of all, do you want me to open a prayer? Is that something, you know? I mean, I mean we can. But the, the genesis of the show is I look at this as our family. It's our family get together, Longhorn family time to get together right what's up there to everybody and then you know and then when i think of the family i try to think of who i would be in that family and i think of the drunk uncle and i'm thinking for the negative connotation like the drunk uncle that really needs to go rehab I think it's a play off of words but it's all about hey i want to make sure that you guys are entertained i want to make sure you guys have a good time the kind of things that you have when your uncle is, is, is drinking now at the end of the day i want you to also make sure that you learn something from the show as well so that's why it's all encompassing, and that's the name of the show. And so don't get so caught up in like the that you know it's I'm not, I'm not sitting here like getting drunk. I may have a drink, but no, not getting drunk. <laughs> that's a good name of the show. So I was down in Mexico, and my youngest son's mom had relocated uh, to there, and so uh, she felt relocated last year. So that's when I became like a full time dad. She just decided that that's what she wanted to do in life, and had, no, had you know no choice but to support her. And uh, so I, I flew my son down there so he can see her, spend some mommy time, uh, get to catch up, love on each other. And uh, so that's really what it was. And that was in Merida, Mexico. So I wasn't even in like the party spots. Like, yeah, I'm in the Yucatan. You know, that, I'm in the Yucatan, man. Let me tell you, I felt like Shaq. Like, I, I mean, I, I, at, at 6'2", 
I was rolling around like I was like, man, I am like the tallest person around here. <laughs> it was crazy. But I had a, you know, had a good good little time. I was able to do a couple little things. Miss little man. I uh, can't wait to see him again. I'm going to try to head down right before the season starts, visit him for a little bit. Um, and then maybe at Texas OU, he'll be back at the beginning of the year. So, uh, but anyway, that's why Unc was down there to handling some business, taking care of some family stuff. But Unc is back. I am here, ready to go. Big 12 Media Days is right around the corner. The Big 12 announced today who would be the, the, the representatives from each school at Big 12 Media Days. And we had a chance to see who Texas is sending to Big 12 Media Days. And that uh, was really cool to, to see and because and, I was kind of curious as to, okay, well, who who's going to be uh, the folks that, that that Texas sends out there, you know, who who does Steve Sarkeesian identify as the leaders of his team? Because ultimately, when you know you send people to to Big Twelve Media Days, that's kind of representative of who the coach has identified as the leaders on the team. So we know that we know now that Quinn Ewers will be going to Big Twelve Media Days. Jordan Whittington will be at Big Twelve Media Days. Xavier Worthy. Uh, will be there. Jalen Ford and Jade Barrett will be there as well. So uh, those will be your five Longhorn representatives speaking on a Wednesday, as the Big 12 has told Texas, you know, you guys are using that headliner. So the Big 12 always had Texas speak and Texas go on a Thursday. And the thought process was always Texas is the big, big headliner, right? So you want to have people that hang around. They go on Wednesday, but you want them to hang around on Thursday to get some Texas stuff. And the Big 12 was like, you know what? Y'all good. We good. Y'all can just, you guys can just go on Wednesday and then just get out of here, right? So Texas went from being like the headliner that performed at midnight at like a concert festival. So now, right now they're like a, like a four o'clock act. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, that's where Texas is right now. They're about 4 o'clock. They're not the local band that maybe performs at 2. So you maybe you can say they're like 5 or 6. But they definitely ain't, ain't, you know, they're not the headliners. They're not rolling out there at midnight like they normally did or 1 o'clock or anything to that effect. But it's all good. It is all good. We, so we know who's going to be out there, uh, everything that's going on. I saw something from about the NCAA and them kind of basically trying to flex their little muscles uh, as relates to you know nil and and booster relationships and collectives and, you know which you know adversely means texas won and i'm just you can fight that fight if you want to but that's a fight that you, you know we already know how uh this how the court system has thought about and treated the ncaa as relates to this whole nil stuff and what they can or cannot do uh, and then they want to go uh, and get slapped down again feel free but Texas is going to do what the Texas is going to do. The governor's already got some stuff that's in motion. Uh, and, you know, Texas p officials are going to say they're going to follow what the Texas rules are. And the NCAA will have no choice but to either uh, lose in court or lose their member programs, whatever it is. But it, they, they will lose uh, when it's all said and done. Uh, it will be a cute little battle. But I predict that it will be a, a, a massive loss for them uh, once again. So, I wanted to get into a show. I'm not, I didn't want to waste too much time. It's summertime. I know you guys are hot. It's 115 degrees outside and stuff right now. It's probably, I guess right now it's probably 98. And I wanted to do a fun show uh, with my guys, El Presidente and Tom G. And I wanted to do kind of a draft where we get to pick the best long home players on the roster. And I think this is going to be fun. We've done this before on this orange blood staff, and I wasn't quite sure we'd be able to chance, have a chance to do it uh, this year. So I'm going to bring them in and we're going to have fun, have fun. In the chats is what we do. We're going to have fun banter between us back and forth. So without further ado, El Presidente, Tom G., what is going on, fellas? How is everybody doing? Good to be back. Good to see you guys. Hey, Omar. Great to see you too, man. What's up, Omar? Um, oh, hello, hello, hello. Hello, Omar from Mexico and Tom G from Houston. <laughs> oh, like, why do you say it like that? Like, Tom, this is Tom. I, I mentioned Tom. 
I bet you Tom has got like a, a nice two story, uh, you know, five million dollar place in the woodlands or something like that. So sweating it out down there in the armpit of Texas. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, he's got to do, got to do what he's got to do. I mean, it, it's by by the in the next couple of months, it's probably gonna be flooding down there, uh, yeah. El Presidente. Like all it's gonna take is two inches of rain, and everything in Houston is gonna be underwater. So uh, he's got to enjoy the dryness uh, while it is. So so fellas. Right. What the good part about what we're going to do and the fun part about this exercise is that we're going to get a chance to see where everybody kind of thinks these players on this year's team is kind of ranked because we're going to be picking out the best, best of the best. So we're going to do this thing, guys, kind of like an we're going to do it like a fantasy football draft. We're going to you watch it at home. It's going to be like a fantasy football draft. We're going to go one, two, three. We're going to do kind of a snake order. Okay. Uh, and then, so we're going one, two, three, and then it's going to throw three, two, one, and then back. Okay. So that's how we're going to do it. That's how the format's going to be. Um, we have not determined an order yet. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it real easy. I'm going to have Tom G and El Presidente. We're going to heads and, and, and tails. So this will be the loser of this heads and tails. And El Presidente, I'm going to allow you to, to choose this. The loser becomes number three. The winner then gets to fight me for the number one spot. Okay. All right. Sounds so, good. El Presidente, are you ready? Yep. Tails never fails. All right. Does that count if it fell? Jesus. Yeah, it's like fine. The NFL right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it fell. I didn't catch it, so it fell on heads. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> so, already rigged. It's already rigged. <laughs> I, I hear the protest as it is. So, El Presidente, you're at number three. Tall G, you get to choose right now. All right, ready? I'm going to catch it. Wait, no, no, it didn't it spin. It didn't spin. All right. Heads. Jesus. What's it on, Omar? <laughs> I lost it. <laughs> oh. What'd you choose? Heads. It was on heads. So, you, you actually do win. Okay, by the way, throwing this while I'm, while sitting is a lot harder than I thought it would be. Um, so let me get Tom G. I shall go second. And then L Presidente will be third. We will do five rounds. You guys want to do five rounds? Sure, yeah. We'll do five rounds. That would take, essentially be the top 15 guys. If we have some time, we can do a couple more rounds if, we, if, if we're really uh, enjoying ourselves. Uh, let's not take, guys, more than a minute in between picks because it, it makes for a really bad uh, uh, TV if we're all sitting here and we're watching you for like two and a half minutes trying to make a decision. So let's not try to take more than a minute. Um, but now, Tom G, you end up being first. You end up being the first pick. So listen, after you give you your pick, Go ahead and give me the explanation as to why you made that choice. And Blake, do what you do in the chats and so on and so forth. If you want to say good pick, bad pick, whatever the case may be, uh, feel free to join in. But with the first pick in our 2023 Longhorn Draft, if you got a chance to pick a guy, Tom G, who's the first guy you're taking off the board? I'm going to go with uh, Mr. X Mullet himself, Quinn Ewers. Quinn, okay. Why did you choose Quinn out of all the options that were available? I, I just think he's poised for a, for a big season. Um, I also believe that you know he's good, he's going to have his uh, hands on the ball more than any other player by far. He's he's the team leader. Um, he's the one that's going to drive this engine, and so I, I think it was a pretty easy decision. Was there anybody else, Tom, that you would have thought of? Because right now, what you're saying to me right now is that you think Quinn is the most important player on this team. Oh, bar none. Bar okay. none. But do you think he's the you also think he's the best player on the team? No, uh, probably not the very best. Um, I, I think he's in the top three. Okay. But I'm going to I'm going to say he's probably the most important most valuable to the okay. team. Well, 
I would so tell I'm you geez. this. I just want you to know he wasn't even on my draft board. <laughs> I, know, you know, you got, I know who you got. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's hold off on that one. Yeah. I've got the second pick here, and I, I, I'm actually get to run to – this is one of those where I get to run uh, and, 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 and be able to put in my pick. Uh, because with my number two, the number two overall pick, first pick for me, number one pick for me, second pick overall, I'm taking Kelvin Banks. And give me the guy who is the, I would say, is the top player on the team. Give me the guy that I believe is a a, a bona fide future uh, first round pick, uh, potentially top 10 pick at the end of the day. One of the best left tackles in the nation. Um high on Kelvin Banks. Just absolutely believe in him. This is a guy that pretty much comes in last summer and, you know, ends up being kind of a day one. He ends up being a day one starter when it's all said and done as a guy who's a summer enrollee at left tackle. Like, you know, we always talk about how important it is for guys to early enroll and get here in January. And this guy shows up in the summer. He's like, yeah, I'm here. This is my spot. And this is where I'm going for. Uh, Kelvin Banks to me, is kind of the glue. Uh, he is the thing that, or he's the, 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 the grease that makes everything go. So I'm going banks with my number two pick. Okay. I think that's an excellent, excellent pick. That was the number one pick on my board. Uh, he is a franchise left tackle. He went against Will Anderson, Trey Wilson, Will McDonald, and Felix Azuk, all first round picks in the NFL draft. Mm-hmm. Will Anderson, the third pick in the draft, did not get a sack or a tackle against him. Trey mm-hmm. Wilson didn't get a sack or a tackle against him. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Will McDonald's and Felix Azuk from Kansas State, they combined for t- nine total sack tackles between the two that day when they went against Calvin, Andr- uh, Calvin Banks. So uh, mm-hmm. not a better first pick, Anwar, than the top player for the – Texas Longhorns. I I totally agree with your pick. He was the he was my number one on my board. So yes. then El Presidente will go number to two you. On my board. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> number two on your board, really? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So number two on your board. Interesting. Uh, he wasn't he, on El Presidente's board. Quinn wasn't apparently. So El <laughs> Presidente. Then I'm curious. We'll see who was number two on your board who are you going to take and the good part is you get back-to-back picks here so, so i'm going to go with jeff Abitone sanders is my number two pick ah. oh, so far my number one pick and the third pick in this draft he is going to be the uh second tight end taken in next year's draft behind uh brock mm. bowers of georgia mm-hmm. uh as we all know uh, he could sneak his way into the first round if he has a great year of blocking, in my opinion. Uh, he, he, that's the one thing about his game that is probably these NFL GMs are lacking. You know, he needs to be able, he needs to shore that up. You know, we all know he's a pass catching tight end, but he needs to be a little bit more physical. I'm, and I'm not saying a Dan Campbell type tight end. But, you know, Jason Witten knew how to get the job. Kelsey knew, knows how to get the job. These high-paying stud tight ends that know how to get open, that know how to work the middle, you know, they, they do know how to block a little too. And uh, for me, his athletic ability is off the charts, and uh, he could sneak into that late round. Look, there were three tight ends taken in the first – no, I'm sorry, two tight ends taken in the first round last year and a couple in the second, he could sneak in and be a first-round choice uh, along with Quinn Ewers and Xavier Worthy next year. So that is my pick, my first-round pick. Your first-round pick. Okay, yeah. so what we – and by the way, high on my board. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm disappointed to see him mm-hmm. coming off. I was hoping to sneak him in yeah. round number two. Like I was I – was, I was hoping that – you guys were going different directions, but uh, I can totally understand uh, why you did that. So now I'm curious 
uh, El Presidente. You went out with back-to-back picks, and you didn't have any time mm -hmm. to you know, do a mock draft to know yeah. who's going to be there. So this is about to be the number, per, the number three guy on your board. Who are you taking? So with my number three pick, I, I'm going to do X. Xavier Worthy, you know, I, I my prediction for him is a huge bounce back year and he gets to go back to his freshman year and doing what he does first. Catch that ball in space and run. Uh, I, he is a NFL GM's dream. If you can, he has speed, he can get open. Uh, you know, he had the yips this year, uh, you know, the, the dropping of the balls. But I, I feel like he's going to come back strong his junior year, you know, and he's got some competition. You know, he, he this is a contract year for him. You know, Marvin Harrison Jr. up there at Ohio State. You know, they've got two up there at Ohio State. Uh, neighbors at LSU. You know, he's, he, you know, he's competing with some guys to get in that top 15, top 20 range of the first round. So for me, that is my second pick uh back to back wow yeah i mean you you've got the number one tight end you've yep. got the number one receiver uh you've got two guys that are you know competing to be in day one uh as far as draft is concerned you know potentially if you know day two you know you know jatavian if he goes in the second round or or so you just never know how to draft may fall. Same thing goes uh, for Xavier Worthy. But I, I like where you go. You've gone so far. Like in uh, you've gone to Tavia, you're going to Xavier Worthy. So that puts me back on the board. And I I am going to try to just sneak something else away. And I'm going to take Jalen Ford. And I don't know where he was for you guys, but if I can walk away with for the first two rounds and tell myself I've got what I think is the best offensive player on the team and I've got the best defensive player on the team, I'll be very happy with that as a start. I have been president of the Jalen Ford fan club for a while. Um, he's a guy that all of last year, I, going into the season, I had him as kind of my breakout guy to which most of the staff on OB was giving me a hard time about as far as like, why are you, why are you so in love with this guy? And then when it was all said and done, I was actually more right than wrong as it relates to Jalen Ford. Love this guy. Love his up upside. I think he, you know, you know, whatever DeMarvion Overshone was for that defensive side and whatever was the linebackers, Jalen Ford will probably continue what he's doing, but be the unprecedented leader. Jalen Ford is my guy. I, I am taking him with my second pick. Excellent. I, well, he was my pick, uh, Anwar, so I will give it to you. Very, very, very nice pick. Okay. Tom, I'm gonna we're back around to you. The good part is you're going to get two back-to-back, -to -back, Tom. So yeah. it's so been a I'm while. I am going to flip to the defensive side of the ball. Okay. Um, and I don't know if his father was watching, but I'm going to go with Baron Sorrell, who I think is probably mm. the second best player on defense uh, mm -hmm. right now at a position that is critical. Um, if he doesn't put pressure on the quarterback, I'm not sure who will. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, you know, I'm not going to call it a contract year for him, but in a way it could be a contract year for him, depending on how he performs. Um, and I'm super excited uh, for what he's going to bring to the table this year. I like the, I like the pick of Baron Sorrell right now. Like I, I you know, I, I, I do like it, you know, 5.5 sacks, you know, so, um, you know, we definitely, you, you're expecting and anticipating that it'll be a, a lot, a lot higher you, you figure him at that maybe in that double digit uh, range as far as Barry is, is concerned. Barron's is, is concerned. Um, you know, no problem with that pick at, at number two, because he it, it, the thing is, if you don't take it up number two, you know, he he probably won't won't last, you know, back with state back to you. You know, at, exactly. at, you exactly. know, now you, your next you'll do two and three and and then he won't state back to you in the fourth. So um, 
high hopes for, for you. By the way, El Presidente, your overall thoughts on Baron Sorrell? Like, what, what do you think about him? If he – I like the pick, Tom. I, I really do. Again, my high hope for him is I hope his dad is right. I hope his dad is 100% right. He gets 10 sacks. Not only are we playing in the Big 12 championship and winning the Big 12 championship, we're playing in the, in the college playoff. He is such an important position of need. I know we have talked about the edge position being – one that we haven't had for years. As a matter of fact, a little a rhetoric coming out on Orange Bloods this weekend, how the coaches are saying, you know, we don't have that true guy. You know, we want to re redo the whole room. If I'm Baron Sorrell, I'm pissed off at hearing that and saying, you know, you want to bring these other cats in to beat me out? I'm about to show you what I'm about to do, and then I'm going to head to the NFL. So I love the pick. I love where his dad thinking is. If his dad's saying that, then he's thinking that. Uh, I, I I really like that pick. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, my next pick, I'm going to stay on the defensive side, except I'm going to shift to the backfield. You know, I, I think I'm going to go with Ryan Watts. Ah, he, he is the number one man in the secondary. You know, six foot two, rangy corner. Um, he is in a contract year, or, you know, technically could be in a contract year also because he's a junior. Um, I've got high, high hopes for him last year. Last year, I thought he was the best corner we had. Um, and I think he's just going to build upon that this year. And so I'm, I'm, uh, to me, that was, that was a pretty easy choice when you look at the best, but what I think is the best player on the line and the best player in the backfield and in the, in the uh, back end of the defense. It is, you know, my reaction, obviously, because Watts would have been my next. That was the guy I had my eye on. Guys, when I went to um, practice in the spring, you know, and, and there's always these these people like, you know, that you catch your eye. And I just I just looked uh, at, at this number, this guy number six. I'm like, who the, who the? And he... Ryan Watts from a physique, he looked like an NFL guy. I am talking about as big as he was, as strong as he is. Like he absolutely looked the part to me. Um, it, 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 his footwork was great, his speed was great. Like everything about him, uh, I absolutely love. I, I I think he's a guy that you know has an amazing potential and uh I, I love i love the pick uh, and i think that's a sweet spot for ryan watts right there i'm just gonna not gonna be uh not gonna lie about that i, I love the pick just so you know all right, all right so we've got so we you've you've gone baron sorrell who you've done you've done ryan watts i'm just i'm just crossing guys off my list this one is a this one is a tough one for me and I, I, I am, uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with my heart. And, and there's a, there's a, there, I, there's a guy, there's guys that I'm, I'm wanting, that I, I would like to get, but I'm, you know, in the draft, I'm gonna go with something that's a little bit more bona fide, a little bit more certain. So with this pick, my pick, the second pick in the third round, I'm gonna go Jade Barron. And for me, I I just think Jade is 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 a is a solid you know guy. He had nine starts last season. Uh, honorable mention, uh, all all Big Twelve. He you know he finishes with eleven point five tackles for loss. He has a sack. Um, you know he has three pass uh, breakups. Uh, he has a QB hurry. You know he 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 is a guy that honestly. Um, I, I just I think he's got he's he's got all Big Twelve potential on him at least second team for me, um, you know I I just I like his upside Ryan Watts clearly you know I, I love for sure you know Ryan Watts you you got me on that one, um, but I'm gonna go with just what I feel like he'll check the boxes and give me the solid uh, production week in and week out may not always be sexy. But I think he'll give me solid production, uh, and that's what I want to want. So I'm going to go with Jade. I, I, th I think that's a good that's one, Onward. And the reason, yeah. you know, you're that guy that's covering the slot receiver. Which nine times out of ten in college football, that's 
one of their top two guys uh, on the wide receiver side. You know, NFL executives love that guy that's versatile, that can bounce outside, he can bounce inside. But if you can find that that dime guy, that nickel guy, I mean, you can carve out a 10-year career in the NFL uh, being able to play uh, that that position. Who's the guy that plays for Seattle and was at Detroit with Texas, played for Texas? Quandre. Um, yeah, yeah, Quandre is the best example of that. No one, you know, you, you can have a long, long, great career in the NFL being that digs type player. And I, I just think that's a, uh, that's a really solid pick. Okay. El Presidente, I, I made my pick knowing that you're probably going to take two guys that I covet and, and leave me in, in the dire straits <laughs> in the fourth round. <laughs> but so I, I made it and I'm just like, man, I don't want to see what he's, this dude's going to do, but I'm going to, I got to go with it. I gotta go with it. So, oh, Presidente, give me your pick. Give me your 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 guy, your third guy on your team. Trevante Sweat at defensive uh, tackle. Yeah, you know, I it, like I said, if we're if this team is gonna do, you know, yeah. I sent y'all that text right before we start, and Alton Sports came out with their prediction of Texas going eleven and two, eight and one in conference. If if Texas is gonna have that type of year it's going to start up front and you have to have a war da daddy down low to be able to do that you know Coburn's gone uh Collins we don't know about Murphy mm. you know we're hoping for but we have to have that nose three technique that is constantly double team in PK's defense so our linebackers can flow over the top and spill those gaps. So for me, it, he's not going to be the sexy show up on the stats, 10 sacks, Warren Sapp type. I mean, we haven't seen one of those type of players in a while at the defensive tackle position. But he, what he is going to do is he's going to take a double team. What he is going to do, he's going to get his hands on that guard, and he's going to swallow up that tackle. And for me, that – you know, those guys, they don't get the love, but, you know, those are the ones you have to win down in the trenches with. So that's going to be my pick of the end of the third round, correct? Sure. And then the beginning of the fourth. Well, oh, can I comment on his pick? Yeah. I don't know if I like that pick right there. Ooh, I think, okay. I, think I see him more as a later round pick, not, not, not that early. I agree that, you know, He'll, you know, he's flashed a little bit, but he hasn't come close to living up to his potential. And, and maybe this is the year. Um, you know, I, I really hope it's the year. Um, but you know, if we're talking about develop, I mean, if we're talking about drafting someone, you know, on the team who we think is going to have the biggest impact and 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 value and everything else, I I think I think it's a reach for him. Sorry, Eric. <laughs> hey, not a problem. Not a problem. You know, like I said, the NFL. Uh, when I was I was doing my research for the draft, they they've got him predicted. Some boards have him predicted as a third round pick. So for me, these NFL executives have seen enough out there of his film to think he's worthy of that third round, fourth round grade right now. Now that can blow up, uh, but for me, kind of when I was doing my analytics on all this. That's what I. That's what I saw. Big okay. word analytics. Analytics. I love yeah. it. I, I love like it. I love it. You. I was doing my analytics yeah. on this. The money ball himself. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So, okay. You know, when I make this stuff, and all this stuff comes up, there's always some data somewhere that I'm looking for. Uh. All right. So then, who who ends up being the second one after that? What you know, for me, I you know. Bill Parcell said this best. I'm going to pick my own groceries. Do y'all remember that quote when he was with the Dallas Cowboys when they were asking who's going to draft? Is Jerry making decisions or he's making decisions? And, and that was Big Bill's big, you know, saying, you know, I, I get to pick the groceries if I'm going to have to cook what's on the field. 
And for me, I think Sark went out and got him a big time wide receiver opposite of Xavier Worthy. And that's A.D. Mitchell out there on the mm-hmm. other edge. You know, he okay. you know, he he's he's been a little banged up at this time at Georgia. You know, he I think he missed six games his freshman year, a couple last year. So the stats haven't been the crazy stats that you would like. But you know, again, you know, he didn't come here to Texas to not have the ball thrown to him five to seven times a game. I don't think he I think he left Georgia with a lot to prove. And, and to be his own guy. So for me, um, for me, uh, I think that's that is the pick. I, I see why Sark went and got him. You have to have two guys that can be able to stretch the field. But that for me, AD is the guy that you can throw it up. He can, you know, hopefully on Sunday mornings, we're going to see Randy Moss saying you got mossed by AD Mitchell in the draft. I, you know what? Yeah. It hurts my heart. <laughs> it, it hurts my heart right now because I that's a guy I was, I was about to run up to the podium me too. Everybody... me too he was the next on my list yeah I was like I'm good I'm like I was hoping you were gonna go in another dark I was hoping he's gonna say like and I'll take by when when he's when you started saying like we don't know about Byron Murphy I was like ah oh, damn don't don't do that um and you you went in a different direction and so I'm I'm upset uh, about it, but I love AD Mitchell. You yeah. know, I and you've got the number. I mean, you you've got the number one tight end. You got two number one receivers. Uh, you've got a number one guy in the interior. Uh, I love the team, El Presidente. I love the picks right now. You've you've taken advantage of that corner slot, <laughs> yes, uh, out there, um, and you really have left. Uh, myself and Tom G uh, in a little bit of a bind because I, I've got some guys, but now I know only, I've only got two more picks. And so, you know, my, not, now it's a choice of like, am I, am I going upside? Cause right now I feel like it, you guys would feel like with everything that's left, we're kind of projecting a little bit. Yes. Is that, is that fair to say? Guys? That, is, that is fair to they use our, our six and seventh round picks that they're hoping to make an NFL franchise yeah. that we're taking flyers on right now. Yeah. And I, I I'm going all right. So I'm going I'm going to err on the side of of caution here. And I'm going to go with Byron Murphy the second as my guy. Um you know when we are, when Keanje Colborn starts talking about the guys who made him better, um, he talks about Byron Murphy. You know, the, 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 everybody has praised Byron Murphy throughout this offseason for his work, his progress, everything, you know, he's been able to do. Um, you know, because of his height, he doesn't have the, the Tavondre sweat kind of intention, but – He's the guy that we know is going to start. We know he, you know, you know, he, he was, according to Alex, one of the most productive interior guys when, you know, when he was in there just per his snaps. And I'm just going to, I'm going to go with Byron Murphy um, because there's some other guys I'm thinking at. And those guys want, we'll, we'll discuss those guys because they probably aren't going to get uh, drafted. Uh, but I still think Byron Murphy has a chance to be, uh, uh, you know, a really good player and very productive on this team this season. You know, I'm hoping he comes out, you know, I, I think a, a great example for Byron Murphy is Puna Ford type career, you know, uh, really get in there, that nose technique, that one technique and kind of ink or two. Uh, you know, we get that with Barry Sorrell out there, Devon Joy Sweat. You're talking about three, three, probably one of the best defensive line units in the, in the Big 12 if we can have all three of them playing at their top level. All right, El Presidente, you're waiting patiently. You're at the corner. So we're, this is this is key for you, El Presidente, because there's got to be no regrets, right? You've got the two – you get to take the last two guys that you want. So go for it. Hey, wait, wait. Hold on. Wh- which direction are we going? Yeah, no, no, no. It's Tom G's. Tom G's going up. 
I'm sorry, Tom G. I'm sorry, Tom G. I'm sorry. I'm not, my bad. I was, my like, bad. Up, I was looking right at you. <laughs> I was looking right at you when I said it. And I said, no, President Nancy, I'm so sorry, Tom. All right, all right. I just want to make sure I got a fair shake in this. No, 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 no. Yeah. No, no. El Presidente only gets one more. El Presidente only gets one more. Right. So this is what I mean. So back back to you. All right. No regrets here. You, you've, you've done Quinn. You've done Baron Sorrell. You've done Ryan Watts. I feel like you're going to have to step it up over these next two picks. So who do you got? All right. I'm going to go with the other bookend of the line who's been – probably one of the best right tackles we've had in the last 10 years. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to go with Mr. Christian Jones. Ooh, I I have a list of guys that I wasn't sure who's going to get drafted. And so tell me why you took Christian Jones. I mean, since he's manned the right side of that line, I haven't had to worry about that side of the line. I mean, he's handling his business. And for all the ridicule that man took on the left side, <laughs> he has handled his business on the right side. And I don't, I'm not sure there's a better right tackle than the Big 12. I mean, he should be all Big 12 this year on the right side. Mm. Okay. And who who do you've got after right after that? You so you got one more. Yeah, one uh, more. All right. Now I'm gonna this treat this it. draft like a keeper's league. So I'm going to go a little bit of a little bit of a curveball on this one, but I think this guy is going to have a significant impact uh, this year, and I'm going to go with John Tay Cook, the second. Oh, okay. Go ahead, and explain. I, I I just feel that before the season's over, he he's going to be the third wideout. Um, as far as stats goes, I mean, Whittington's good and everything. Nothing to nothing on Whittington. But I think Jonte, with his explosiveness and and route running and everything else, I, I think I think he's just gonna get the ball a lot. Um, and like I said, it's a little bit of a, a bold move um with the mm-hmm. with the look, you know, like on the future. Um, but I think I, I really and he's such a polished receiver. I, I just I think he's going to have a, a big impact on the on the team this year. The incoming freshman? Oh yeah. Hey, we already have one bet. Don't tell me you want to. I'll put a I'll put a forty catch bet, thirty five catch oh, bet on the line. God, that's some big webos right there. God, have mercy. <laughs> I, go, I had to make a bold move. I had to make a bold move. Uh, uh El Presidente, why don't you agree? Uh, I just think I, you know, uh, Darian Lemon in, in the chat said it best. We're we're so deep there right now. I now do I think they're going to play? Yes, uh, I, I, but I I think those guys, those, those studs, the young guns, as I call them, uh, I I think they're going to get some playing time, and uh, I think they're just a, a a year away with this older group that we have on campus: Jay Witt, Mitchell. You know Xavier Worthy, you know mm-hmm. Isaiah Naor, you know you know coming back things like that. So uh, you know, it, to me, you know, I I just think there's just an older group now. Tell me, you know, who do you think Cook can beat out? I, I think as a four, I think he'll be the number four. Yeah, so you're saying if we go doubles on each side he's the guy in there and, and if we have now, any injury he's the first one in yeah, cr- anybody rest he's the first one in okay i i see him getting 35 40 catches this year wow gotcha. wow so let me ask you this you 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 think he would have more than isaiah nayor when healthy yes Interesting. Okay. All right. Because Isaiah Nayor was, you know, toast of the town just, you know, just last year. You know, you're you're going to the what have you done for me lately uh kind of card. But I think I think there's they're gonna be really careful with Nayor. They're not gonna they're not gonna stress him. Mm-hmm. Um and and Cook has not only flashed, but he's just been phenomenal whenever he's been out there. Um yeah. and I, I just think that you, you just can't keep talent like that off the field. You just can't. Okay. All right. Well, I I have my last pick and 
like you. I, I, you know, I'm going to take a little bit of a flyer, but I think this has, um, you know, I, it, it's a, it's a low buy. So if I'm, uh, El, you know, El Presidente, I'm, I, I get to buy this thing maybe in a short sale or something and, and flip this thing and make it look good. Um, I'm going to take Jonathan Brooks with my last pick. And, you know, at the end of the day, if he ends up being the guy who's the starter for Texas and look, we're, we're, proje- we're ho- you were projecting CJ Baxter will be the guy at, you know, at, at some point. And, you know, we know that Jaden blue is, is done well and things to that effect, but more than likely Jonathan Brooks kind of falls back into his spot. Is he Bijan Robinson? No, you know, Bijan's Bijan. Like that's a, that's a top 10 pick. And we're not going to make that comparison, but is he a guy that when I look at Brooks, if he's the starter this season, is he a thousand yard guy? Sure. Is he a probably a 300 to 400 receiving yard guy? Sure. Is he a double digit touchdown combined guy? Sure. So I'm going to go with Brooks because if he ends up being the starter and stays healthy for, you know, 12 games and then of course beyond, uh, but sells 12 regular season games, you know, we, we know Sark's record of when it comes to running backs. He's bona fide, he's certified, and we shouldn't, you know, shouldn't have to anything to wor- worry about. So uh, I'm going to give Jonathan Brooks some love, and he'll be my pick. He'll be my last pick. I like that a lot. I think I think he is going to be the next man in the room. I think he is going to rush for a 1,000 yards behind that older offensive line. Uh, I think he is the – I think he's going to get the first crack to uh, carry the torch. And uh, I do like that pick. I don't. I don't like the pick. Oh, you don't like the pick. You don't like the oh. pick of the guy who might be the the starting running back, but you like the guy, the pick of the guy who might, you know, be like the fourth option in on the receiving. What? Oh. Tell me I, this. I, I guess. I guess. I want, the reason I don't like the pick is because I think I think by the OU game, this is CJ Baxter's job. I mean, potentially, but I mean, you, 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 what you're also at that point predicting a Jonathan Brooks failure. Exactly. I, well, okay. Well, no, 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 no. If that becomes his job by the OU game, you're predicting that not only the Jonathan Brooks failed, but you're predicting that this offense somehow sputtered with him as, as a running back. That's what you're saying. I, I think I think that over time, Baxter's talent is going to shine through, and and they're going to see that he's just an overall better player, and that with him in the offense as the threat of running the ball, things are just going to be different. <laughs> ah, Tom, Tom G's been hanging out in the rogue shop tonight, <laughs> <laughs> Jesse. Jesse. Hey. Let, let, let's just be honest. Tom. Let's just be honest, Tom. Like when we get into the season, the season is all about preparing for teams and opponents. So the competition thing is done. Like there's no there's no competing. A, a guy would he would so CJ Baxter with his limited carries would have to just do something phenomenal within that. So within his four or five carries, he'd have to have like two of them that go for touchdowns to kind of move the needle. Remember, the last time we really saw any kind of in-season running back kind of, you know, rotation thing is when Chris Warren and Deontay Foreman, and then when Chris Warren got hurt around like week four, then Deontay Foreman took over and became the lead back. And then at that point, it was like, why the hell was this even a competition? Because Deontay Foreman is that much better? So that, that I'm just saying... Usually when we get in season, it's hard to make that movement. But let's let's see. I mean, we still got a whole fall camp to go through. Okay. Right? There's two there's two weeks of competition in fall camp, Tom. I there's know, two weeks. I know. There's two weeks of competition. Well, I know about it. There's two weeks you, of competition. I'm high, I'm high on Baxter. I'm high on there's Baxter. There's two weeks of competition in the fall, and the last two weeks are spent getting ready for the, the, the opening opponent. Like there's only, it, 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 you start in August, 
you st- it's two weeks of, oh, let's be competitive. And then it's like, oh, let's get ready for Rice. And let's get, and then more likely get ready for Bama. Let's just be honest. Tom, if you want to take a side bet right now, I'll give you a side bet right now that Savion Red is going to do more than Baxter next year. Hey, (laughs) I will take that bet. Wait, 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 wait. Let's get the parameters. Let's get get the parameters. Throw it out there, Anwar. All right. So we got to think when you say more, let's define it right now. Are we talking yards? Are we talking, because we can't, yards per carry, something crazy can happen. Yeah. So it's, so it's got to uh, be. Let's like, just make it easy. Just total total yards. You're saying Savion Red has more than CJ Baxter. Absolutely, I think CJ Baxter gets. Uh, I think CJ Baxter gets redshirted next year. Okay. All right. All right. Blake, make sure you write all this down because I ain't gonna and, remember. I'm too. And what, old. and what are we betting? And what? We, and what's our, and What is the bet? And when does it need to be paid by? So yeah, all one- bets are final at the Big 12 championship. Yeah, okay. I agree with that. Okay, okay. okay. So are, are we talking steak dinner? What did we do last time? We did 500 bucks last time. What? Okay. Did we write that down last time? This yeah, one's 100. It was, remember, it was I picked the uh, uh, Purdue quarterback and you picked the Florida Atlantic quarterback. Yeah, Casey Thompson. Oh, Casey Thompson is, uh, over. That's right. That's right. That's, that's right. right. Yeah, don't don't forget that. Yeah, I, Tom, I'm not worried. All right. Okay. <laughs> and then, so, are we betting right, money? So, are hey, we betting food? We'll, we'll, we'll make the math easy. We'll just do the same thing. Who's got more yards? Okay. Okay. We're doing dinner. Let's do dinner. Let's do dinner that Friday night. All right. Fine. And guess what? Dinner, and then that, of course, that then the loser will also be able to give the other person five hundred dollars in person. That's right. All right, that's great. Five hundred dollars in person over dinner. Yeah, that's that's great. All right, we we are. And that's no cheap ass dinner. It's got to be a good dinner. No, it's, it's Golly, steak. Tom, when we were last time in town, you were worried about going to the to the what do you call it hotel with me. I was like, we can't be dressed like that. I go, I walk in and I own this place at All the right. Four Seasons. Jesus, right. you worried about me wearing shorts in there? <laughs> too bad, too bad. Del Frisco's isn't closer to Arlington. Though. It is. It's right there. It's one in downtown Fort Worth. 10, they 20, got, 15, they got one. In, oh yeah, yeah. They do have one in Fort Worth. Yeah. It, all right, the Del Frisco's. That's that's what we're talking about, Tom yeah. G. There's a Del all Frisco's right. in downtown Fort Worth. Sounds good. Sounds good. Perfect. All right, we're we are more than good to go. All right, last pick, El Presidente. Uh, Blake Blake has got this whole thing written down, so uh, I want to make sure we got it. Thank you, Blake, to, for doing that. El Presidente, you have the very last pick. You've had Jatavian Sanders. You had Xavier Worthy. Had Tavondre Sweat. Had A.D. Mitchell, who's the steal of the draft at the number fourth in the fourth round. Who are you closing it out with? Who's your quote-unquote Mr. Irrelevant? The uh, kid from Arling, uh, sorry, uh, what is he from? He's from Mansfield Legacy, Jalen Catalan. The transfer Ooh. from Arkansas is my sleeper pick with my last pick. I feel like he is going to come in here, provided that he's going to be healthy and secure one of the free safety spots. We have to have that. If you look at his film from Arkansas when he was all SEC, the the kid was everywhere, but injuries have really derailed him. I I think it's a great uh, pickup by Sark, uh, insurance type of pickup. If Crawford is Crawford the other starting uh, safety, is that correct? Yes, Keaton Crawford is. Yeah, you know, he he physically, uh, Keaton, he that has the in it guy has the NFL body, but he has never put it together. So for me, Catalan is the guy that could really shore up the back end of this defense. Um I, I just think uh <laughs> Scotty, I just think that that you know he could be that missing piece that we've needed back there. Uh you know, let me give you an example. First verse TCU you know, we had some communications problem in the late part of the game, and they went right over the top for us. You know, I'm just, I'm just hoping, and you know, that kind of end of the game for us real late. You know, we've got to be able to have that guy that can play cl- a close to the line of scrimmage and make that t- tackle, but b kind of play center field and uh, be that last guy standing. And you know, his film 
has said it. I know Jaron Thompson is back there too. Uh, but, you know, you've got to have two back there that can make plays. And uh, that is my Mr. Irrelevant that, you know, he, he has all SEC um, mm-hmm. accolades. So I'm hoping he comes here and becomes the uh, all Big 12 accolades as well. Blake, go ahead and put a poll uh, up right now. Yeah, go ahead and put a poll up right now because I got some other stuff I want to discuss with the guys. So you could go ahead and Blake's going to put a poll up in the chat. Uh, the question is going to be who, who's got the best team. Um, I really feel like it right now is going to be between myself and El Presidente. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, you know, it's it's really – Tom. I don't think anyone's going to really care for Tom's team uh, when it's all said and done. Um, but I think it's just going to be between the two, the two of us as far can, as that. Is can concerned. we do a poll on it real quick? Yeah, we're going to do Blake's, Blake's going to do a poll. Blake, Blake is p- taking care of that. He's putting that up right now. So don't worry about that. I, I do have a question for you guys. Are, are there who, who, who's the guy? Cause I have a guy that you really wanted to put on your team and you just didn't have a spot for, but if you were a, a team that you could sign someone as an unrestricted free agent right now and just be like, I've got you, un, an undrafted free agent rather, and you're just saying, man, uh, you know, go through it. What you, Blake says, run through one more time. All right, all right, let's, let's, let's run through the team, Blake. I'll, I'll go ahead and do it. Let's do Tom's team. Go to put that up on the screen, Blake. Uh, Tom, he's got Quinn Ewers. He's got Baron Sorrell. He's got Ryan Watts. He's got Christian Jones. He's got Jonathan Cook. That's t- he's got Quinn, Baron Sorrell, Ryan Watts, Christian Jones, and Jonathan Cook the uh, second. Myself, I've gone with Kelvin Banks, uh, Jalen Ford, John A. Barron, Byron Murphy the second, and Jonathan Brooks. That's Banks, Ford. Uh, Baron, uh, Murphy, and Brooks, and El Presidente, uh, which, by the way, I do like his team. Uh, J- Jatavian Sanders, Xavier Worthy, Tavondre Sweat, uh, A.D. Mitchell, Jalen Catalan was the only guy on this team where you say to yourself, you got to hope he's healthy, um, and he's 100% you know, this, this, in, in this season uh, and see what happens, but that's who El Presidente went to and went for. And so now we're going to put a, a, a poll up in the chat uh, for you guys to go ahead and vote on. And then I'll go back to what I was going to say, which is, Hey, is there a guy El Presidente that you said, man, I really wanted to get on my team. I just couldn't squeeze him in. But if he was an undrafted free agent, I would sign this guy like right now. But in three minutes of the draft, he's on my team. Do you have a guy that you're like? There's a guy here that team. we've all seen him flash, but we haven't seen it in a, almost two seasons. And for me, that's Alfred Collins. Mm. Where is that kid? You know, when when are we going to see that kid from that Alamo Bowl game a couple of years ago? in some of the games that he did have that last season when Herman was here. You know, for me, I think we all agree the talent's there, but for some reason it's just not translating on the hill, on the the field. Uh, I know some people are going to, you know, there's some other names out there, but for me, Alfred Collins is, is is the guy that I'm wondering why, you know, what are we missing there? That's my pick. What about you, Tom G? Did you have a guy that you wish you like, damn, yeah. I wish I could have got him on? I'm going to go with Mr. Carrot Top himself, Burt Auburn. I, you know, <laughs> wow. So Burt Auburn I, I think, love. Hey, you know, when you looked at how many kicks he missed last year, it wasn't many. And mm. he's just going to be better this year. You, y'all you forget how bad our kicking was, how bad our kicking game was. The From year Dicker to, to Redhead? Dicker wasn't oh. bad. No, no. There was some between Dicker and Burt. Who was the who was in between? There wasn't. That was it. Yeah. But Dicker was sure? like two seasons ago. Yeah, because remember Dicker came in on the spring game and goes, Yeah, who's the next kicker? Uh I guess one of them. <laughs> I thought I thought I thought Auburn did good last year. I mean, he had some clutch kicks. Um, I got, I'm going to show the kicker some love. I'm going to show the kicker some love. Okay. 
Okay, okay. That's different. I, I I feel like for me, the guy that I really wanted to get in was Jaron Thompson. That was that was my guy that I I just I just couldn't I couldn't I, I you know I was like all right I got I got to take Jonathan Brooks just for the upside on offense. Um, but you know this this guy's um you know, played for, you know, I was like his four years or so, or it just be his fourth year. Honorable mention big 12 last season, 12 starts last year, uh, you know, 83 tackles, you know, 50 that were solely had an interception, had seven pass breakups. Like he, he's, he's very nondescript per se, but I love Jaron Thompson, what he does out there. Uh, I, I just, I love his game. He's a guy that, if if some if, if if Brooks was off the board, I would absolutely have taken Jaron Thompson. If we had another round, uh, he would have been my guy. Um, let me ask you guys this though. For sure, you would say Jed Bush, but I guess I was wrong. Yeah, no, 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 no strays for Jet Bush tonight. No strays for Jet Bush. No strays for Jet. We're gonna leave Jet alone. No, but what you guys? Uh, was there anybody? that thought about Whittington. Oh, I like Jay Witt. Uh, you know, I like Jay uh, Witt. Yeah. He, uh, you know, he's been the ultimate class from Cuero, Texas. He, I, I you know, I, I like what he represents. Who were the five names that you said that, that uh, Sark is bringing to media day? Uh, Jay Witt, Xavier Worthy, Quinn Ewers, Jade Barron, and I believe... Uh, Jatavian Sanders, if I'm correct, you know, we would all agree Jay Witt's probably going to be one of the captains on this team. Would y'all agree with that? Oh, gosh, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, the, sure. the kid sure. has represented himself. He, you know, he finally was healthy last year. I'm just hoping he Jalen Ford, my bad. I was, I said Jatavian, it was Jalen Ford. It's it's Quinn Ewers, Jordan Winnington, Xavier Worthy, Jalen Ford, and Jade Barron. I apologize. Gotcha. You know, I, I just think he, 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 Jay Witt's gonna is a captain. Um, I, I'm glad he stayed around instead of trying to go the undrafted free agent route. Uh, just got to get him the ball more, get him more of the ball in the space and uh, from mm. that slot position. And uh, I hope he has that year that he did two years ago when Casey Thompson was he- was healthy. I, I think we all agree that was probably his best year on campus. Would we all agree with, on that? Uh, when sure. Casey was the quarterback, yeah. you know, I'm hoping sure. he can get back. To, you know they're utilizing him a little bit more from that slot position and, and we see some more of him and what about and last last one what about anthony hill did you did any of you guys consider oh. putting ant hill on there not yet not oh. yet i haven't seen enough of him yet no i haven't either but you know i, I just looked up uh auburn stats from last year 21 to 26 and one of those was a block 49 yep. long. That's an that's over 80 percent. If we get that again this year, we're cooking with grease. All right. Michael, my business. He says, uh, he puts it in super chat. 66 days until we play food rice. Love you guys. Look forward to Wednesday night. Mike, we appreciate you um and everything. And then yes, it's it's 66 days until. Uh, you rice and you you, you ch- cook that up and you know you can put that thing in a rice cooker you know and and, and make it however you want to make it uh, but you guys will be able uh, to do that uh, and looking forward to that and looks like it looks like according to Blake El Presidente I I, I beat you out by five percent people like, like my that. team. Yeah, just what, like that what coin were the total toss. Numbers? What were the total, I'm just curious where I was at. What were the total numbers? <laughs> well, we got we'll got we'll get to the numbers. We'll just we'll just do percentages at this moment. I was at 40%. El Presidente was at 35%, and you were at 23%, which means all of your family who's watching Tom G voted for you. And yeah. nobody <laughs> else, nobody else outside of your wife. And other family members decided that they wanted to vote for you and show pity for you and that team that you put together that no one likes. But Blake voted for me. That I don't think Blake voted for you. <laughs> yeah. So uh I love the I love the exercise. The exercise got a, gave us a chance to really see 
who we thought were 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 was were was valuable. Um, it's so interesting, and you know, Tom G and, and El Presidente, what I love about you guys most is that you guys are sometimes so opposite on your point of views. Like Tom G goes Quinn and El Presidente. Even when I was like, hey, who's the guy you would love to have on your team? You still didn't put Quinn on your team, El Presidente. <laughs> no. you, you still. And that, that, that could have been your sixth pick. You were like, nah, I'm, I'm no. good on that. It's Tom's, you know, one. By the way, I would have taken uh, Quinn at, at some point, by the way. So just for full disclosure. Uh, and I like the teams. And get, we get to see where everyone's at. All right. Let's go ahead and wrap this thing up. We've been going over more than an hour. El Presidente, just give me some last thoughts uh, from you. Anything you want to talk about? Anyone want to do, you know, shoot at? Uh, you know, we got a lot of people in the chat right now, a lot of people watching. So uh, the floor is yours. You know, guys, we've got uh, kind of the holiday weekend is going to start ramping up. Fourth of July is next Tuesday. And then we are downhill to the football season. And that's, uh, you know, we'd be, we'll be three weeks away from fall camp opening. And, uh, you know, everybody start getting out there, sweating, walking a little bit, because it's going to be a fun ride come August, September, October, November, December, and January. Got to get your bodies right. Got to get your livers right. You got to get Ooh. your mind right. You know, it, it's fun. You know, what are you doing in the off season to take care of yourself during the season? And I can't ha stress to you enough, drink your water, get your 10,000 steps in. Mama and I are going on a flight tomorrow morning at 5.30, heading to Fort Lauderdale. We're going to spend five days of vacation out there, head to the Bahamas, come on back, and then it's go time when I get back here on July 5th for football season. So I am looking forward to uh, – guys, it's going to be a fun time. It's going to be a great season. Uh, start getting ready. Start Everybody needs to start making their plans to get to Alabama and take that stadium over and uh, – Big 12 championship or bust. Everybody's going to come to El Presidente's hometown in Arlington, Texas. And that's what are I want to see y'all that first weekend in December. Where are you staying? Are, are you staying in Tuscaloosa or are you staying in Birmingham? Flying in and flying out, baby. That's it. Night what? Yeah, flying what? in and flying out. Yep. <laughs> are you serious? Yeah. Uh, we're How working are you on doing the it? Oh, come on. Oh, that's, that's whack. That's weak sauce, man. <laughs> yeah. That's too that that you can't make that into a business trip. No, oh, yeah, we can. We'll talk something on uh, talk something. All right, on the all right, all right. <laughs> clearly, clearly, this is a wifey decision, so I'll let that one go. Tom G, what are you thinking? Uh, you know, as we close down June and we start getting closer to Big Twelve Media Days, SEC Media Days, like oh, everything's coming around the corner. You know, I'm really looking forward to the media days because I want to hear the confidence from the team. I want to hear what they have to say. Well, I, I mean, I've, I've heard Sark enough, but I want to hear are the, you know, the media is going to have just talk about how great Texas is. The expectations are high, yada, 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 yada. I want to see how the, does the team acknowledge and embrace it? Do they run from it? I'm, I'm curious to see how the team handles it. And then I'm also really looking forward to, uh, to fall camp because we've got a lot of new faces. Um, whether whether it's you know A.D. Mitchell or or Catalan or, or whoever, and there's some really, you know, I think there's some really big battles go, that are going to go on for on that too deep, and I'm really curious to see you know does D.J. Campbell win a spot, um, you know does Ethan Burke or you know Jamon Tap and you know how does all that shake out? I mean. Uh, you know, I don't think Colton Basic will, will be in the too deep right off the bat, but I think there's some just fascinating young talent. I'm curious to see the impact they're going to have on the too deep, and I'm just uh, I'm just super excited. Yeah, when well, you say T.J. Campbell, does you know? Don't forget about Cam Williams as well, right? I mean, he's <laughs> obviously exactly. yeah, he's he's in the mix, and you know, so yeah, who who could potentially be in one of those guard positions? Uh, that will be an interesting thing. You know, DJ gets hurt a little bit and Cam Williams continues his ascent, you know, in, in spring. It'd be interesting to see if he's able to do that, you know, going forward. I mean, I think, you know, for me, my final thought is 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 kind of, you know, surmising what the guys are saying, which is football season's right around the corner, guys. I mean, we, we are heading into July. And by the time we get into the beginning of August, it's all football. So 
we're, we're, we're very close to being past like, like the fluff of the off season and getting into like the meat and potatoes, you know, of everything, like you said, solidifying the two deep, which will happen in the, you know, in training camp, getting ready to eat rice and, and all those other kind of things. And, uh, business trips to 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 Tuscaloosa apparently um you know it, it's 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 getting there we're right around the corner uh this team will be able we'll be able to see what this if they meet the expectations or not uh but we're super excited uh and I do, I'll let you know that we will definitely be here for all of it El Presidente's invested Tom G's invested I'm invested and uh, let's see what happens but we're getting close baby we're getting absolutely close so I, it's weird to say it makes makes a, a mention of the sponsor when the sponsor is actually <laughs> uh, on the screen. But not, one more time, if you are looking for a home in the DFW area, that guy who you've heard just give all of his Longhorn love, that's the guy that you need to call. Don't call anybody else. <laughs> I don't. Really, I don't hear nothing about Remax. Colwell Banker, forget those guys. Go for the guy that's a Longhorn fan. Support him and everything that he's doing because he's a Longhorn fan, and he will hook you up in the DFW Eric uh, area. So that's Eric Sells Homes DFW. That's my main man, El Presidente Tom G. Great job as always, El Presidente. Great job as always, Blake, who's always doing a fantastic job behind the scenes. We absolutely appreciate you. Thank you for watching you, watching this whole show. We'll be back next week. We have a safe 4th of July. Make sure that you guys pay respect to all the military folks, the veterans, the guys, people, men and women who are currently serving. Uh, give everybody some love because it wasn't for them. We wouldn't have the freedoms that we enjoy. Remember what Uncle always says, live each day like it was your last because one day it will be. And, guys, we'll talk soon.